Okay, so the next thing is about Cuba. So Cuba goes communist. Uh, there is a revolution in 1959. It's led by Fidel Castro. Uh, at the time, so there was a dictator uh, by the last name of Batista, and Batista was supported by the U.S., but he really was not a nice guy. Uh, Castro, and there's a lot of poverty there, so Castro leads a revolution. There's a lot of um, revolution that we're worried about in Central uh, America, also South America. So Castro is an example of this. And at first he wasn't a communist in the sense that he wasn't going to have any alliance with the Soviet Union or anything. So a little unsure. But once he took over um, and then he consolidated power, he made an alliance with the Soviet Union. And that is uh, what alarmed the United States the most. So what is the United States going to do about this? Because there's a real fear that the Soviets now can use Cuba as a base to attack us. Cuba is only 90 miles off the coast of Florida. So the, the Soviets have no presence at all in the Western Hemisphere, uh, and this would be their first. So all-out efforts are made uh, actually this during the last uh, year of the Eisenhower administration and also in Kennedy's administration and then all the other administrations to follow throughout the Cold War. So what happens is in April 1961, there is, as you know this from some of the homework, there's an invasion called the Bay of Pigs. And it's because it's where it was located at. So the United States secretly armed and trained Cuban exiles. This is known as the La Brigada. And that was the plan was overthrow the government. They were hoping to land, start, uh, take over, the, uh, defeat the forces there that meet them, and then stage an uh, uprising throughout the country. The people were we so upset with um, Castro that they would revolt against him. However, this turns out to be an epic disaster. As you know, the Castro himself uh, was able to get his spies into the group and people reported back. So they knew everything was coming. The U.S. tried an early attack with some air support first. It's disguised as Cuban planes. Um, and so this did not work. And actually, uh, Castro and his forces did not know it was coming. They actually thought this could be a full scale United States invasion. So they had everybody waiting there for uh, they had all whatever manpower and whatever military power they could have, uh, they could assemble, they had there to meet them. So the La Brigada was uh, almost entirely destroyed. Some people were captured. Um, and so it was a big failure. This does not look good for, um, for Kennedy. Okay, and we're going to end on the Vienna Summit and the Berlin question. So Berlin, if you remember, is in the middle of East Germany. You see on the map here, this is Berlin broken up into the sectors, the French, the British, the United States, and the Soviet sector. So if it doesn't show it on this map, but it's surrounded by this entire area, this West Germ uh, sorry, West Berlin um, of the free nations controlling those sectors is surrounded by, in being in East Germany, by the uh, communist system. So in 1961, there's a uh, meeting between JFK and Khrushchev. Um, by the way, Khrushchev, that is pronounced the in Russian, the V at the end of the word is pronounced as an F. So as I mentioned, he's the chairman. Uh, he took over in 1953, uh, about a month after Stalin died. And so he had some ideas of some things like de-Stalinization, which was kind of not be as awful to the people as Stalin was, um, to give a little more greater freedom in terms of culture, education, um, trying to encourage some more farming. There was always a food shortage in the Soviet Union. And he invested heavily, as you know, in the space program that they succeeded in getting Sputnik and Sputnik 2 into outer space and were beating the United States by the uh, by 1960. Uh, however, though, he uh, didn't. Uh, there was an uprising in Hungary, which was one of the Soviet satellite states in 1956. And uh, they had a uh, they brutally cracked down on those people there protesting. So, um, so tried to do some things that were seen as reformist, but on the other hand, he. Uh, was uh, kind of like the others in the sense of uh, crushing dissent. Uh, and that is Khrushchev right there on the left. So the summit, the idea was for um, really the United States is trying to uh, try to maybe thaw a little bit of the relationship with the Soviet Union. However, Khrushchev is, he's going to test Kennedy. Kennedy is new. Uh, he is not, it doesn't have the experience 
of international politics. Uh, he's just, you know, he's only been in office for a couple of months at this point. And then can Khrushchev also trust the new president after these two incidents? One was Bay of Pigs we just talked about. Um, and the other thing that happened on the, in Eisenhower's last year, in May of 1960, a U-2 spy plane that the United States had that flew so high uh, in the atmosphere that it was thought it could not be shot down. That was shot down. The uh, Eisenhower administration said, oh, it was just a weather plane and went off course. So we're, you know, we're sorry about that. Um, nothing to worry about. And then Khrushchev basically upstages them and produces not just parts of the plane intact that they shot down, but um, the pilot himself alive. The pilot was uh, Francis Gary Powers. And so anyway, that's the setup on that. Then can, can that Kennedy trust Khrushchev as well? Uh, what trust do we have in the Soviet leaders? So the U.S., this is all about Berlin. And the U.S. wanted to keep its zone in uh East Berlin, then it should be actually probably be East Germany. Um, so, um, and then so so we have some influence there. They didn't want to give it up, but Khrushchev was trying to force the United States, Great Britain, and France out to withdraw, and so that's really what this is all about. So, who's going to succeed on that? Well, what happens is that actually there's a mass exodus out of East Berlin of uh, people trying to leave and get to the West uh, because things are not good in. The communist part and uh, you know economically and so they're trying to have a better opportunity so at th this point this this meeting does not really produce anything the u.s doesn't budge they just said we're not withdrawing uh khrushchev doesn't get his way so overnight one night he starts his soldiers and the local uh, east berlin police force start laying barbed wire throughout the city on the border and what eventually happens is you have the berlin wall is created uh shortly thereafter which is constructed and has guards all around it. So what they did was they cut off people from leaving. So this is a wall not to prevent people from coming in. This is a wall to prevent your own people from escaping and leaving. And there was about 5,000 people a day at the height of this, uh, right before the ball, wall was built, that were leaving East Germany and heading to the West. Okay, that'll wrap it up. We'll also do the Cuban Missile Crisis, but that will be a separate lesson.